All right, so we're we're gonna go and look at another uh, workflow in Git. This one's a little tricky. So I wanted to spend a week just talking about this one. And it, I want to show you a couple of methods for rewriting history. You do a series of commits. We've spent a long time talking about how to do this. But further on you go with Git, and especially the more you interact with big open source projects or big software projects in general, they're going to have guidelines about how they want their history to appear. And as a result, you're going to have to do things like change your commit messages. You're going to have to restructure your commits so you have fewer commits, or you're going to have to update your branch so that it has the latest changes in the project, even though you started your work previously. All of these things require you to use aspects of Git uh, for rewriting history. Now, the thing that I want you to understand about what we're going to do today, a couple of things. The first thing is a lot of the, uh, a lot of the operations we're going to do are going to require you to interact with your editor from Git. So I want to just call out if you have not set up your default editor with Git yet, you need to do it. And if you, depending on what operating system you're in, Windows, Linux, or Mac, there is a command git config dash dash global. And then there's a whole bunch of different um, global settings that you can set up for git. And one of them is called core.editor. So by default, I think by default, um, git will often use Vim or I have it set up to use Emacs, which is really comfortable for me, but I'm guessing that very few of you want that to be the choice that you, you would make. So what you should do is you should tell you should tell Git, I want to use Visual Studio Code or I want to use some other editor. I, go in and set up this default. And then whenever Git needs an editor, which you're, you're going to have to have an editor for the things I'm talking about today, editor integration with Git, I mean, then it will know which, which editor to... Uh, to use. Okay, so step one, set up your editor. Okay, so let's talk about some strategies for working with working with commits. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to continue working on Telescope and I'm going to work on some pull requests that are in there and it will allow us to try a few things out. So, okay. The first trick I want to teach you is how to do an amended commit. All right, so let me show you. Um, I have a branch that I'm working on right now. I have a um, I have a, a pull request up, and in this pull request, uh, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. The purpose of this pull request doesn't matter. But I want to show you some common problems that we get into when we're when we're working on. Uh, working on Git. So one problem we get into is we'll make a commit, but we will somehow we'll mess up the commit message. So maybe there's a typo, or maybe you're working with a project that has a very specific way that the commit messages need to be generated. So this is becoming more and more common. Lots of projects are really specific about the wording that you use and, and how you do it. So let's say that I wanted to change this commit, this commit, I want a different commit message. I want the same commit, but I want a new commit message. Okay, what would I, what would I need to do if I did that? So what you can do is if you want to change the, you want to change the commit message in a commit, you can say git, first of all, git status. So I have no files that are dirty right now. I have a couple of untracked files, but just ignore those. So I have no files in my working tree that need to be committed. But I need to change this commit message. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say git commit, and then I'm gonna say dash dash amend. So when you amend a commit, what you're doing is you're taking the last commit that you made and you are amending or adding or modifying something in it. You're changing something about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this as is right now. What it's going to do is it's going to start up my editor and it's going to give me 
a chance to basically redo the commit. So it's going to, you'll see that it has all these changes that are about to be committed. So all the changes that I did before, it's gonna do them again, but it's giving me a chance to come up here and modify my commit message. So let's say for example, um, I wanted to change this and I wanted to get rid of the spaces. Let's say I just, I don't like the, I don't like the empty lines and I want it to look like this. Or let's say I wanted to write my commit message like this. I want to say do this and then I want to do like bullet points. So I'll go in here and I'll say, you know, here's the, here are the changes that I made. Like that. So I just want to restructure the commit message somehow. And then what I'll do is I'll save this and I'll exit my editor. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna make a brand new commit. So if I look at the log, you'll see that now I have a commit and the commit here, the commit message looks like this. It still has all my same changes. So if I say git show, all the changes that I made before are still in here. So it didn't modify anything that I did, but what it did is it modified the commit message so that the commit message looks looks really different here. Okay, so I have a pull request that's open right now. So the pull request that I'm working on is this one right here. This is uh, pull request 1196 and I'm working in a branch called Easy Dev. okay? So I just changed the commit and let me show you what my old commit looked like. Here's my old commit right here and it had all these extra lines in it and so on. And the old commit was 123B, and this new commit is D900. So you see what's happened here is it has created a brand new commit. The old commit had a different SHA, it had a different uh, commit message. It was, for all, as far as Git is concerned, it was, it was different. So what we've done is we've changed the history of this code. So the, the history that's up on GitHub for this pull request is different than the history for is different than the history that I have right now. I've got two different versions of this thing. So watch what happens if I try and push this. If I say git push origin easy dev, it's gonna reject it. Basically it says this has been rejected because it's not possible to do a fast forward merge on GitHub. So GitHub can't take what is already up there and just update it by moving the branch pointer one forward because I'm now pointing to a commit that it's never seen before, All right? So look back here, I have one commit. One commit is 123B493, this commit right here. And it says, I can't fast forward this because like, they're completely different commits. So what you have to do whenever you change the history of a commit and you wanna push it up to your origin, what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to do a force push. Now this is very dangerous to do. I've talked about this before, force pushing says, so really what I need to do is this, I need to say git push uh, origin easy dev force. So if I tell git, look, I know what I'm doing. I want you to ignore the safety. This is like taking the safety plate off your, your table saw and you're about to run some wood through it. It's dangerous. It's really dangerous to do this because what I'm about to do is I'm about to overwrite what is up on GitHub. So you really have to know that what you're doing here is the right thing to do. The only time that this is a safe thing to do is when you're working inside a pull request that you own, you're working in a branch that you own that nobody else is using. So you never want to do this on the master branch. You don't want to do it on a, on a shared branch that lots of people are using. It's only going to be used on a branch that you're creating for a particular bug fix. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me shrink this down so you can maybe see this happen live. So I'm going to push this up. If I go to my conversation here, I'll just scroll to the bottom and I'm gonna push this with a force. So here I go. I press enter. Pushes it up. Now down here on GitHub, you'll see that GitHub received it. And what it's done now is it says, um, I did a force push, see here? So I forced push 
I forced pushed from this commit to this commit. So GitHub knows about the two commits. It still records that they exist, but what's going to happen now is I'm going to have only a single commit. Um, let me update this here. I'm going to have this new commit and you can see my new log message looks different. So it's the same commit, all the same changes, but uh, what I did was I did a, a force push in order to get this to go. Okay, so that's one way that you can use an amended commit. Now let me show you another way that we use amended commits. Okay, so just so that I don't mess up my work, I'm gonna make a new branch. Git checkout dash b um, amend, uh, amend demo. Okay, so I have this new branch called amend demo. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a change to the readme and same kind of thing we've been doing before. I'm gonna delete a line from the readme and get status. And I'm going to say git add readme, git commit, and I'm gonna say update documentation. Okay. So what we have now is we have this one commit called update documentation. Now, as soon as you do this, what happens? As soon as you do this, you realize, crap, I oh, there's one other thing I needed to do in the documentation. And then you say to yourself, okay, uh, Emacs, read me. And you go in here and you say, I was also supposed to delete this line here. So there's another thing that I was supposed to do. So now what do we have? We've got an extra change, this extra change to the readme file, and I actually want it to go into the old commit. So git log, I want to, I want to put it in here like this, right? So how do I do that? Well, all you need to do is amend your previous commit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git add readme, git commit. Now, if I said git commit dash amend dash, uh, dash M, and I would say something like forgot to add uh, another change or, you know, people, people are like, they run out of things to say update again, or whoops, all kinds of stupid commit messages because they're like, I don't even know what to say anymore. I just, um, you know, crap. You, you, you've been in this situation, right? You're just like commit, 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 commit. And you're making all these commits. And really what you want is you just want one commit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git commit dash dash amend like so. Okay. Now, if I do this, what's it going to do? It's going to start up my editor and let me type in a commit message again, but it's gonna take the changes that were in the old commit plus the new changes that I have and make a new commit out of both of those. Watch it, watch this. So here's my commit message again, update documentation. It's gonna modify the readme. I save this and I exit and I look at the log and you'll see that I only have a single commit. And if I show you this commit, you can see that this commit has both deletions. I deleted this line and I also deleted this line. They're both in the same, they're both in the same commit. Let's say I do it a third time. So once again, I make a mistake and I forget, oh, there's one more thing I gotta do. So I go back into the readme and I say, um, I go into the readme and I say, you know what, all of this is wrong. I'm supposed to delete all of this. This is the easiest programming I've ever done. It's just deleting deleting lines from uh, files. If you can get work like this, this is the way to go. So I save this, I close it. I have updates to the readme. I want those updates to end up inside of this commit, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing again, but this time I actually don't wanna change this commit message. I wanna take the current changes that I have, I want to put them into the old commit and I wanna use the old commit message. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add the readme. I'm gonna say git commit dash dash amend. And then I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna say dash dash no dash edit. Okay, so what that means is take my current changes in the staging area 
amend them, add them to the previous commit so that they become a new commit. And don't bother editing the commit message. Use the old commit message when you do it. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna press enter. It creates this new... So now I've got three commits that have all ended up in this one commit, like that update documentation. I can prove it to you if I said git log dash p. It shows me that this commit, update documentation, has one, two, three deletes. All those deletes are all inside the one commit. So if you ever forget to do something and you want to uh, you want to update it so that you have um, the new stuff included with the old stuff, whatever you just forgot to do. Remember, all you have to do is when you go to do your commit, you're going to say git commit dash dash amend. And if you also don't want to change the commit message, no edit. If all you want to do is change the commit message, don't change any of the files, leave everything as it is and do git commit dash dash amend, it'll let you um, modify the, it'll let you modify the commit message. Okay, super powerful. All right, now this works really well if you're sitting on a commit and you just wanna like put something else into that commit. But as soon as you need to do anything a little more complicated, you have to reach for a different tool. So the tool that I wanna teach you now is called a rebase. So rebases are, are, are very powerful and a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of live examples so you can see, see what, um, how things work. Okay, so let me talk to you about why people use rebases to begin with. Um, let me, the other day, uh, in our, one of our previous videos, we were looking at the Node project and I showed you, um, I showed you the history of the node branch. Okay, so look at the master branch on node. Um, it is a commit followed by a commit, followed by a commit. Like, do you notice how there's no branches? It's just one continuous line that goes straight down. Everybody seems to do all of their work in a single commit. Every commit is based on the commit that just happened previous and this is a really neat and tidy way for your commit history to happen because you can see the changes. It's like, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. It's just this linear history. It shows all of these changes. This is not how most projects do it because most projects have branches and the branches go out and come back again. And when you have dozens, hundreds, thousands of developers, imagine all those branches, you just end up with this spider web of branches. And it's really hard to look through the history and see it. But if I scroll down through the Git hist history of the node project, it's just this, it's just a straight line. It's incredible. So I want to show you how they do that. So the, um, the telescope project, we aren't as strict about this. So we do a lot of, of rebasing, but we don't force everybody to do it. So if I show you the if I show you the history of this project, you'll see that there's there are actually a bunch of branches. So as you're going down here, you can see various people working on things and we branch and put things in. But we try as much as possible not to let those branches get too big. You'll notice that almost every one of these branches is just a single commit. And it's it's not quite as clean as the node project because we don't like our project isn't as serious and we're not trying to maintain things at the same level that uh, Node.js is. So let me let me talk to you about how we can use rebase to do what we want to do. So first, let's remind ourselves of a couple things. We talked last time about doing merges. We said, like, if I show you this again, you can see these merges really easily. So let me find a simple merge here. Um, okay, here's a simple merge right here. So you can see that we had this commit, 
right here. And we have this commit right here, which is connecting two commits. So this is a merge commit. You can see that this was a three-way merge. It's a three-way merge because it takes this commit here, which was one commit, and this commit here, which was on another branch, and it connects the two of them with a third commit. So we have this three-way merge where we're, we're taking two branches and we're bringing them back together again like so. So we said when you wanna do a merge, the way that you do a merge, like let me show you what I would do. If I wanted to, um, I'm on this branch called amend demo right now. So if I said git merge master, what would it do? Well, we said that when you merge, you merge into the current branch. So that would mean that I'm gonna merge the master branch into this branch right here. And if I were to check out, if I said git, um, if I went to the master branch and I said git merge amend demo, what would that do? It would take my amend demo branch and it would merge it into the master branch. So when we talk about merging into, what we mean is, where is this merge commit gonna go? Which branch pointer is gonna move? Is the master branch gonna move or is my amend demo gonna, gonna move? In both cases, we're gonna create a, a commit that's gonna connect those two things together. The downside of a merge is it makes your history more, compli more complicated because you have these branches that have to be, that are separate and then they have to be brought back together. So what we really like to do is we like to do a fast forward merge. Fast forward merge allows us to just move the branch pointer forward one. So we are going to essentially add one more commit onto the branch and it's gonna move it forward. And there isn't a third commit. We don't have a third commit that connects two branches. We just slide forward one in order to get that. It's not possible for me to do a, for me to do this here. Um, for me to, to make my branch so that I can do a fast forward merge onto this. So let's talk about our strategies for being able to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through what a, what a rebase is and then we'll talk about what we're doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update my master branch. So I have a bunch of remotes lots of remotes and the remote that I want right now is the upstream branch or the upstream remote. I wanna pull everything from the main telescope project. Um, I wanna pull everything from the main telescope project into my repository. So it looks like the most recent thing that changed happened 16 hours ago. Ray brought in a bunch of work that he's been doing on our Docker setup. And I wanna pull all that work down into my, my local machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my master branch, I'm already there, but I check out my master branch and I'm gonna say git pull upstream master. So remember what a pull is gonna do. A pull is going to fetch and merge all in one step. So it's gonna pull the master branch from the upstream remote and it's gonna do a merge with the master here. So let's do this. Now this, because I never touch my master branch, this should do a fast forward. So if I press enter, let's see what happens. So it did, it did a fast forward merge and it's it's pulled in all of the work. And so now I have all of the new stuff that's there. And if I do a git log, you'll see that Ray's stuff uh, was merged in Wednesday, October 14th. And just behind that, there's another change that Cindy did so that happened on the 14th as well. So there's a bunch of these changes, quite a few things actually that happened on the 14th. Okay, so let's go back to my branch. Uh, git checkout easy dev. So I wrote my code on Tuesday, October the 13th. So this is a really common scenario that you're gonna get yourself into. You're gonna make a branch on an open source project and it's gonna take you a week or two weeks or a month or something to do your work. Meanwhile, the master branch for that project just keeps going. So if you're working on a big project, there could be dozens or hundreds of commits that'll happen. So we can already see that quite a bit happened. Like, let's just go look on GitHub here. If I look at the commits, you'll see that 
Um, somewhere in here is where I started doing my code. I don't know where it is exactly, but somewhere in here on the 13th. So there's stuff from the 12th, there's stuff from the 14th. So I'm in here, right in the middle. So you see all of this stuff happened after I did my work. So that's a problem because my branch is behind, is way behind the main master branch. So you, you can imagine if this is the master branch like this, my work kind of goes off to the side over here. It's like this, I have this little branch off to the side where my commits are, I have one commit that's over there. What I would really like to be able to do is I, I really want a time machine. I want to be able to take my work, even though I did it in the past, and I want to bring that work all the way forward so that it looks to Git like I did my work today. I want to have it look like it happened right this minute. So how would I do that? All right, so the work that I have... The work that I've been basing my work off of is this commit right here, 7823, this one, 7823 CFC. Let's see where it is. 7823 down here. So this right here, look at all this. So this is where I branched off right here. So Anna has a patch or a, Anna has a change that she brought in and it landed in the master branch on October the 11th. And that's when I made my branch. So let me uh, switch views here for a second and I'll get both of these side by side. So my code, this is where I branched off of the master branch, this one right here. And you can see that since then there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, 16 PRs have been merged, merged since I started my work. So my work is branched off of here and it is one commit, this one commit right here. What I wanna do is I wanna change the base of my commit. So, the, so currently the base of my commit Let's define the base as the, the commit where your branch connects back into the main line. So where did I connect in with the master branch? Well, the master branch is all of this from everything from here down is the master branch. And the only thing that's new is, is this right here. This is where I have done new work. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it possible that this commit right here, 0C0, this one, that was just merged 16 hours ago, I wanna make it so that this commit is sitting on top of the newest one. So I wanna slide this all the way forward. So how is this different than a merge? If I merge this, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have my commit, we're gonna have 16 other commits, and then we're gonna merge them all together. So we're gonna have this big octopus that's gonna connect the two sets of, um, development and then it's all going to come together. Now that is legitimate. You can do that, but it's messy and it's actually really easy for me to fix this problem. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to tell Git, I'm, I'm on the branch that I want to change. So my branch where I made my, my code changes. And what I want to do is I want to say Git rebase onto master. So what this will do is it will calculate the difference between what I've done and what master has done, and it will attempt to replay or take all of the work that I did and replay it on top of the code as it exists right now on master, as opposed to the code the way it used to. Now it's possible this is gonna fail because my change, let's take a look at it. Um, my, my change is, whoops. Sorry, I'm changing 25 files. So if any of these other files are changed in the exact same places where I'm changing mine, there's gonna be a problem. But if I've been careful, which hopefully I've been careful, and I'm keeping my changes very small, and I'm only touching the things that I should touch to make this change, hopefully I'm not gonna interfere with anything else that's gone on. So even though there's quite a lot of changes here, I'm gonna try and slide all that forward. 
All right, so let's let's do this. So I'm going to run my rebase and let's see what happens. Okay, it worked. So that worked and I have absolutely no problems at all. So let me show you the log. So what we have now is we have my commit and I don't know, let, let me go back to my pull request. Uh, my pull request is here. And if you look at my commits, my old commit was D900399. And look at this commit, 2B1EC6. So Git has created a new commit. And I want you to notice when I wrote it. Tuesday, October the 13th is when I wrote this. And look at the commit that is behind me. The commit that is behind me is from Wednesday, October 14th by Ray. And it is, this is where the the master branch and the upstream master branch are pointing. So you'll see that I am now one commit ahead of the master branch. I have, I have moved everything up or the way that Git thinks about it, I have changed the base. So the base that I'm using is no longer down below. So the base that I was using was this one down here, 7823. So if I go down here, Let's find it. 7823 is right here. So I used to be I used to be branched off of this commit, but now I have branched off, I've slid all the way forward, and I'm branching off of the master branch right now. So this is fun, this is fantastic because this means that I can make a branch, I can sort of pull off of, like think about it like a highway. You're on the highway, you're going 100 kilometers an hour, traffic is going with you, everything's fine. But then you decide you need to pull off the road so you can change a tire, you're fixing a bug. You pull off the road, traffic keeps going. So the highway, the, the master branch just keeps getting new commits. But all this time, it might take you an hour or it might take you a day to get this tire fixed. And eventually you're gonna come back, but what you'd like to be able to do is get back into traffic exactly where you were. So we have this ability to move ourselves back up in the line, move ourselves forward to any position that we want in the history of this project. And okay, so now let's 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 finish this off. So I have a commit here. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to push this up to I'm going to push this up to um, to git. So I'm going to say git push origin easy dev. Is that going to work? It's not going to work, but let's do it anyway so you can see It says I can't I can't do a fast forward merge because you have a totally different history than the one that I'm used to. So I say, all right, listen. Trust me. Just trust me on this one. I know what I'm doing. Go for it anyway. And it says, okay, I hope you know what you're doing. Pushes it up. This will change over here on the left. You can see that it just changed. And you can see that my old one was there. But now I have a new one because I did a force push. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. I did a force push and it has brought it forward now. So I have a new commit and this commit is ready to be, I could merge this in. It's It would be a fast forward merge on the master branch. Let me prove that to you. If I were to check out the master branch, if I said git merge fast forward only, so only do this merge if you can do a fast forward, and if I said easy dev like this, you'll see that it fast forwarded everything, right? Like it was able to just slide the master branch pointer forward, and if I look at the log, you'll see that my master is now pointing to the same place as my easy dev. Now I don't want to do this. I'm just showing you this. So I'm going to reset my master back to upstream master. So remember how we do this. I'm going to say git checkout dash capital B master. So this means reset the master to upstream master like this. And now in my log, you'll see that I'm back to the same place that I should have been the same code that we've been looking at from October 14th where we fixed this. Okay, let's try a harder one. So let's go do this with a pull request that's really old. Like I think the oldest one we have in here is from April 22nd. So this one is really from a long time ago. So I'm going to try I'm going to try rebasing this right now. 
So I'm going to um, fetch from Calvin and I'm going to check out the Kubernetes branch. So this is his branch where he's been working and he, he was working on this April 22nd. So I look at the log and I can see that his code is from April 11th and he's, he's branched off of this maybe. Looks like this is probably where, so April 22nd is where this one, uh, where he started to connect into it. So he his code is way out of date. Like there's probably been hundreds of commits that have taken place since then. And you might think to yourself, well, there's no, there's no way. There's no way that we can recover this code. We might as well delete it and just start again. And with Git, you never have to do this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to rebase this instead of being off of April, I'm going to rebase it. So it's going to be off of the code that happened today. Right? So here we go. How do I do it? Git rebase and then the branch to use as new base. So you have to specify which, which base commit do you want to use for this rebase. So I'm going to say, let's use the master branch. Rebase onto master like this. <laughs> Done. Done. Look at this. So now this code, which was written on April 11th, is now sitting on top of code that was merged yesterday. October 14th. Amazing. So you can use a rebase to get yourself in the right position for working on the latest changes of a project. All right. Now, this is all too easy. Let's let's find one that's harder. Um, what else have we got in here? Fix search posts. So here's another one. He's got three commits. Fix search posts like this. Let's see what happens if I do this one. So I'm going to check out um, search posts. And I'm going to try rebasing it on master. Git rebase onto master. Okay, that one worked. There's no issue there at all. So that one's an easy one too. Let's see if I can find one that doesn't work. Uh, this one, let's try this one. So this one is called search result. Git checkout search result. Git rebase onto master. Okay, now this one didn't work cleanly. So let me show you what's just happened here. So it says, Git says, I tried to auto merge this file, source, front end, source, component, search page, search page.jsx. But there was a merge conflict, so I couldn't do it. And I tried to merge this one, but there was a merge conflict, I couldn't do it. So it says, you need to resolve all of these conflicts manually and then mark them as fixed in Git. So let me take you through this. Now it also says, you can skip this if you want. If you want to stop right now, or if you want to skip this file, you can skip this file. If you would like to give up and not do this rebase, you can just abort it. So that's what I'll do right now. I'll say git rebase dash dash abort, and it'll go back to where it was a second ago. So if you're ever doing a rebase and you get into some big mess, you can always just say rebase abort. But let's try it again. I'm going to do a rebase on master. And it says, okay, you've got some problems. So when I look at the status of this, you can see that two of these files are, um, are not going to work. Two of these files are a problem. So if we open this, let's open up an editor, take a look at this. Um, I have too many editors. Where did it go? Okay. I found my editor. So, here you can see if I go and look at the git, you can see that there are two um, 
two of these files that have problems. So this one has problems. And you can see in my um, scroll bar, it's marked them for me. So down here, I've got these two problems here. And if I look at these side by side, it might be easier to see what's going on. So you can see you can see the current change. So this is what's on master versus the incoming change on the right, which is this is what I'm trying to bring into master. So what's really cool here is a whole bunch of work that happened in April is being brought forward so that it looks like we wrote it today. Whenever you do that, there's always the chance that you're going to run into some changes in the code. So the project used to look one way, but now it looks another way. And so you have to deal with the fact that these things are different. So I, in a previous video, I think we talked about this particular merge conflict. Um, what they've done here is they've just gotten rid of this if results because we don't need it. Like if not results, we return null. Therefore, we don't need this uh, results here at all. And um, down here, it looks like we've got the um, here we've got the author, uh, let me see here for a second. So I've got the, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got the author, I've got a key, I've got the author name, I've got the post, and it looks like a link has been added. So a link has been added here. So basically what we want to do, is, so there is a little bit of work here to put in no results found, which is uh, what this change is all about. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to modify this, if we went to this file here, what I would probably do, um, which file, wait, there's two changes here. Which one was I looking at? Oh, the author result. So here, what I would probably do is uh, take the code. No, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong file. Search page result, this is what I wanted. Um, I, I basically need to take uh, this here and I need to add if search text.length, put this above yeah, so let's copy this and put this here. Like so. And we don't need this if results at all. We don't, I'm going to clean this out. I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need this. And I just need to bring in the link. Bring in the link and let's get rid of this, 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 and this, and there. Okay, so if I was gonna try and resolve this, I essentially need to just find, you know, how do I put these two together so I get the, the version of this that I want. I save this, and then I can tell Git, um, Okay, the two files, I've now dealt with the search page problem. So I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna say git add source, front end source, components, search page. So now I have one file that has been fixed and one that still needs to be fixed. And if we look at author result, Let's look at these side by side because I can't make heads or tail of it in the current view. So this is basically adding in this handle click 
which is going on. Okay, so really what I think I need is I need to copy this over here. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna accept the incoming change and I'm gonna add back this author dot replace author initials is assigned but never used etc now there's other problems in here that i would need to sort through like there's a bunch of uh, imports that need to be added most likely that aren't here papers not defined etc so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sort through the rest of these problems for the moment because i want to I don't want to waste I don't want to waste half an hour trying to fix out the specifics of this code. I just want to show you the concept. So let's say I fixed all of these problems and I've got I've got it to a place that I'm happy with. So I save this and what I need to do is I need to go back here and I need to add this file as well. So I'm going to add this file in. And now I'm ready to carry on with my rebase. So normally what you would do at this point is you would you would commit, but I'm not gonna commit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell git to continue doing the rebase. So I'm gonna say git rebase dash dash continue. And now it says, okay, I'm ready to commit this. And it gives me a chance to change my commit message. I'm gonna leave it as it is. And now let's look at the log. So now the log looks like this. We've got code, we've got two commits here, which are sitting on top of the master branch as it is today, instead of how it was in April or whenever this code, this is October. Instead of how it looked in October, this is now code that has been moved forward and is sitting on top of uh, the code from master right now. So rebasing is super powerful because it lets me it lets me go through and uh, manipulate the history of this. There's another cool thing that I can do while we're in here. Do you see how these two commits don't need to be two commits? Like Calvin's done one change here, but then it looks like there's been other changes that he wanted to add in. Now we learned earlier that we could have done um, an amended commit to put these two things together. But how do you do it after the fact? What you can do is you can do what's called squashing of commits. So I can take this commit and I can squash it into this commit, like put them all together into one. To do that, I have to do what's called an interactive rebase. So the process I'm gonna do here at this point is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna rebase this branch. So you can see the search result branch has two commits on top of the master branch. So it's on top of this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebase it on top of the master branch again, but this time I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to say git rebase onto the master branch, but I'm going to say dash i because I want this to be an interactive rebase. Let me show you what's going to happen. So as soon as I say let's do an interactive rebase, git is going to open up my editor and it's going to let me write this little recipe. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm going to tell Git what to do with each of the two commits that it had. So you'll see that the commits are now in reverse order. So what it's showing me here, it says, these are the commits, first this commit, then this commit. These are the, this is the order that I'm gonna replay these when I rebase them on top of the master branch. And it says, what do you want me to do with each one of these commits? I have all of these options available to me. So if I say pick, what it means is, use this commit exactly as it is, don't change anything. If I say squash, it's going to use this commit, but it's going to meld it into the previous commit. So what that means is it's gonna like fold this commit into the other one here. So like if I said here, if I said squash, it would mean squash this commit into the previous commit like that. Okay, let's, let me do this and I'll show you what it would look like. If I save this and close it, it's doing a rebase now and it's giving me a chance to write my commit message. And you'll see that there's actually two commit messages. So the first commit message is from the first commit. 
But because it has squashed the second one into the first one, I now have the second commit message inside the first one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw this away. I don't actually care about this. So I'm going to delete it. I'm going to save it and I'm going to close. And if I look at my log now, you'll see that I have a single commit sitting on top of the current, the current work that I have right here. Okay. So when you do an interactive rebase, you can take multiple commits and you can put them together. Let me see if there's another one that I could show you this with. Um, I think, how many commits have we got here? Five commits. Okay, here's another, here's a good one. So let's say, let's say we want to take this. I'm going to grab, um, So I'm going to add a remote. Uh, I'm going to add the remote and then I'm going to pull in this branch issue 1070. So I'm going to say git checkout issue 1070. Uh, is that the right one? Oh, I have to fetch, git fetch, and then I can check it out. Okay, so now I'm on the branch. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four. What's the fifth one? One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a merge commit in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and you can see that all of these are sitting on top of the master branch. This is great. So this has been done properly. We've got everything up to date. It's all been rebased on top of master. But what if we wanted to make all of these into a single commit? Okay. So here's what I would do. I'm going to take this branch and I'm going to I'm going to rebase it interactively onto the master branch and then I'm going to tell it to take all of these commits and put them together into one commit. That and I'm going to also rewrite the commit message all in one step. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to say git rebase master dash i. So it shows me all of my commits. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to here's what I want to do I want to reword the first commit. So I'm going to say reword. And you can actually just use the letter R if you want, but I'll type it out so you can see it. So either R or reword. For the second commit, I want to use it, but I want to throw away the commit message. So I'm going to use this option here called fix up. So fix up means use this commit, but get rid of, get rid of the uh, commit message. I'm going to do the same for this, and I'm going to do the same for this, like that. So when I save, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a chance to reword this commit message so I can make it look different. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Close my editor. It's rebasing through these four commits. Now it's ready for me to give a new commit message. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say fix number 1070. Um, fix scroll overlap bug with header bars like that. So I'm just going to rewrite my message completely. I'm going to save this. So now what we have here is we have the master branch is here. On top of the master branch, there is a single commit. The single commit wasn't written by me. So even though I rebased it, it, Git knows who wrote it. So I can do all of the reworking that I want and I can set it up like this, but it's not my work. You can see the work when it was done. And if I show you the code, git log dash P, you'll see that all of the code from this commit, all of these different things is in here. The same, all the seven files, all the same stuff that's in here. Let me go up and you'll see if I go up in my you'll see that it's the same set of changes, right? So all the same things that were done on Git, they're still done in here, but we've been able to significantly clean up the all of the work. We've taken all the work and we've just 
pushed it down into one commit, and we've rebased it onto master so it's up to date. Now, if I wanted to do a merge, think about what the merge for this would look like. If I merge this into master, all it would do is it would move the master branch forward. It would do a fast forward merge, one forward, and be able to, to take this, okay? So really simple, really simple to be able to, to do it, uh, to be able to do an interactive, interactive rebase to change things around, to change your history. So the, the workflow that I would suggest to you that you're gonna do over and over and over again is you're okay you start you're working on a project um so you, you fork it you clone it to your machine the first thing you do is you make a branch git checkout dash b new branch and you do a bunch of work on this branch git add whatever git commit dash m whatever a whole bunch of times you got a whole bunch of these things that go in there and then a week goes by and you want to send this code up for review. So what you do is you go back to the master branch, you pull from the upstream master so you get everything that's in the upstream project down into your repo. So your master branch is now going to be up to date with what's in the upstream. And then once you've done that, you go back to your branch and you're going to say git rebase master like this. So you're going to move all of your commits, you're gonna move them forward. And if you need to rework your commits, if you wanna make them into a single commit or change the commit messages or hide one of them, whatever you wanna do, then you would say, I wanna do this in an interactive mode. So rebase is normally automatic, but if you wanna put it in manual mode and you wanna be able to type out what should happen at each step, then you can say, I wanna do an interactive rebase. You can do this over and over and over again. And when you're working on a big project, it's gonna move quickly. All kinds of other people are gonna merge their work in and things are gonna change quickly and you're gonna to have to update your code all the time. So when someone tells you that you have to uh, rebase, you'll know how to do it. So the, the last thing I'll just say again, I wanna be really clear about this. Everything I've just shown you, you, you can only do this if you aren't on the master branch. So don't do this on a branch that is being shared with other people because you will break their repos. If they, if you force push to your master branch and somebody else tries to pull from it, their branch will be broken. They won't be able to just update and fast forward to yours. So only do this kind of stuff when you're working on, when you're working on a topic branch. That's the, the safest place to be able to do this. And then you can do whatever you want. You can change that history. You can collapse the commits together. Um, all of it's fine. So. Anyway, I wanted to show you this because it won't be long until you'll get asked to rebase, and I wanted you to have a, I wanted you to have some knowledge of what's going on when we actually try doing rebases.